Okay guys, we're gonna go really fast through this one. Uh, trying to compare feudalism between Europe and Japan. Well, remember, Japan, when they get started, had sent their young men over to Tang and Song, China, and borrowed from them. So it's around 790, all right, right in the heart of the European Middle Ages, close to the reign of Charlemagne, where the Japanese will adopt the concept of feudalism. And it will run in Japan all the way up into the 1800s. The process is basically the same. There are a few subtle differences. In Japan, we have one central ruler. We have the emperor. Even though at this time he could be a figurehead. He is the symbolic head of the country. In Japan, we have the figure of the shogun, like Minamoto Yoritomo, right? Remember that guy? Well, he is the official head of the country. He's the chief military official who's the head executive. He makes all of the decisions. But again, Japan is an archipelago. It's a large group of islands. So the shogun has to send out his officers, subordinate generals or colonels to govern the land for him. They become daimyo or large landowners. They work for the shogun. They govern his territory for him. They collect the taxes, they keep the peace, and they look after the people. The daimyo has warriors or smaller lords, all are aristocrats just like a European knight known as a samurai. Samurai means one who serves the daimyo. They are the military force. The samurai is the same as a vassal, a knight in Europe, who also pledges a word of allegiance. The samurai are the warriors for the daimyo, but everybody works for the shogun. They govern smaller villages and towns. Underneath them are the peasants who do the work for everyone else. So unlike Europe, another difference is that the emperor who was, excuse me, was unchallenged. Nobody ever tried to overthrow the emperor. It happened all the time in Europe when petty kings, going back to Charlemagne's idiot nephews, uh, or grandsons, were fighting each other. But... We have the emperor and the shogun. The shogun would be like a king in Europe. The daimyo would be an upper lord, and the samurai would be smaller lords. Samurai and knights, the similarity is both are aristocrats. Remember, all knights are nobles, and all nobles are knights, and all knights are vassals. Well, the same applies for samurai. It's simply the way to govern large territory when you don't have the money to be able to do so. By the late high end period, many samurai, many daimyo were acting independently that caused many small wars. And this will cause that, that conversion when Emperor Shirakawa reasserts his power over the Fujiwara family. The Fujiwaras we were seen as powerful daimyos. And so it is by 1185, 1200, 400 years after Charlemagne, when Europe is in the high Middle Ages, well into the period of the Crusades, that Minamoto Yoritomo becomes the first recognized shogun and runs the government kind of along the military lines. But starting way back in 794, Japanese feudalism is a near image of European. Another difference we talked about today is the taxation system, wherein European kings, each lower and middle class and upper lord took their cut, so the king got many, um, or a small bit from many resources, bottom to top taxation. In Japan, all the tax money went to the emperor, and he divided it up back down, or top to bottom taxation. There is a quick look at Japanese feudalism. Be ready to write that essay, guys. We'll see you soon.